in my presentation. Any questions? Uh, today, uh, my uh, topic of my presentation is a study on generation mechanisms of third order nonlinearity in stored devices. Uh, this is the outline of the presentation. Uh, first, uh, I talk about the background of our research simply. And next, uh, I explain about the simulation technique used in this presentation. And its validity is shown. And uh, by using this uh, simulation technique, uh, contributions of each mechanism to the third order nonlinearity is discussed. So now I start from the background. Uh, linearity performances of uh, RF front end portion in cellular phone handset is uh, getting very important recently. Uh, this is because uh, to realize interband uplink carrier aggregation in fourth generation system, uh, very high linearity is required to the RF front end. So in this stream, uh, improvement of linearity performances of sort duplexers is uh, highly desired. Uh, to uh, improve the linearity of so devices, understanding of origins of nonlinear signals is very important. However, we don't know where, where, and how are generated. So, in this work, uh, we focused on the third order, uh, third order nonlinearity of so devices, and set our target to reveal. Uh, reveal their behavior. So in this presentation, first uh, I propose a uh, simulation technique of uh, nonlinear signals, and by, by using the technique, we evaluate the uh, contributions of each mechanism to the third order nonlinearity. Uh, here uh, I explain about the simulation procedure. Uh, wave propagation of Uh, wave propagation in a periodic substrate is expressed by these three equations. Uh, to, uh, uh, to express the uh, nonlinear behavior in so devices, we introduced uh, these uh, nonlinear stress DN and nonlinear electro, uh, electric flux density DN into this piezoelectric constitutive equation. The form, uh, forms of these uh, TN and DN are uh, defined, uh, uh, defined, uh, defined depending on the uh, nonlinear order of nonlinearity, and in third order case, they are represent, represented like this. Uh, and here, uh, kinds are the nonlinear susceptibilities, and they represent nonlinear elasticity, nonlinear electrics, and nonlinear nonlinear electromechanical coupling. And uh, in this uh, representation. Uh, Tn and Dn are expressed as the summation of uh, each nonlinear effect. So uh, we can evaluate contributions of each nonlinear effect individually from the simulation result. So next, by using this expression, nonlinear stress and uh, current at each electrode are derived uh, like this by using uh, strain and electric field at each, each electrode and nonlinear coefficients. Uh, here, uh, nonlinear coefficients, uh, each nonlinear coefficient has a proportional relation to the each uh, nonlinear susceptibility. And uh, in this expression, uh, strain and electric field in linear case can be derived by conventional coupling of mode theory or p matrix model. And uh, the, uh, in this study, uh, nonlinear coefficients uh, were determined by fitting simulated results uh, with uh, fitting uh, simulated results to the experimental data. And finally, uh, by giving these calculated TN and IN into the circuit simulator uh, as the current sources and uh, voltage sources like this figure, uh, nonlinear signal levels at the external terminals are calculated. Uh, this is the simulation procedure of nonlinear signals. So next, uh, by using this uh, technique, we perform uh, some calculations of nonlinear signals and compare the result uh, with experimental data. Uh, as a test device, we employ a one post resonator for a UMTS band hybrid duplexer. And uh, this figure uh, shows the measured, uh, measured deflection coefficient of the resonator. Uh, its uh, resonance and anti resonance frequencies are 835 MHz and 860. 63 megahertz respectively. 
by using uh, this uh, resonator, uh, we perform uh, simulations and measurements in the uh, in four conditions uh, shown in here. Uh, for third order harmonics, uh, simul uh, condition conditions A and B are used, and for third order IMD, these condition uh, C and B were used for uh, simulations and measurements. Uh, the relation between input and output signals in each conditions uh, are shown in this figure. In this figure, uh, red arrows represent signal input, and uh, blue arrows uh, represent the signal output uh, in each condition. So now I show you the uh, simulated and measured data in uh, each condition. Uh, these uh, figures show the uh, simulated and measured uh, nominal uh, third order harmonics responses in condition A and B. Uh, in these figures, uh, simulation results agree well uh, with measured data. In particular, in the left side here, in condition A, uh, overall, the overall profile and the dip at approximately 2.6 gigahertz are expressed well by simulation. So next, uh, these, uh, these figures show the uh, simulated and measured data of IMD3 responses in a driving condition C and driving condition D. Uh, in these figures, uh, as with uh, A3 responses, uh, IMD3 respo uh, IMD3 responses are expressed well by simulation. And uh, in these uh, or for calculations, identical nonlinear coefficients are used. So uh, these calculated uh, results uh, indicate the validity of uh, proposed simulation method. So now, uh, by using these calculate, uh, by analyzing these uh, calculated data, uh, we discuss the contributions of each mechanism to the start of the nonlinearity. Uh, in this figure, a uh, black line is a uh, uh, calculated total, total nonlinear uh, signal response, and the other uh, color lines represent the uh, contribution of uh, each nonlinear effect. Uh, in this figure, in con driving condition A, uh, effect of mu e uh, 03, uh, mu e 2, mu e 2 1, and mu e 3 0 are uh, dominant in the nonlinear response. Uh, in this condition, uh, output frequency is much larger than resonance frequency. So, uh, in this situation, uh, Acoustic waves are hardly excited in this output, uh, output signal region. So, uh, contributions of uh, nonlinear uh, non electric flux density are dominant, and uh, contributions of nonlinear stress are negligibly small in this case. Uh, in condition B, uh, effect of uh, mu E30, uh, which represents the nonlinear D electrics, is dominant. Uh, in this uh, condition, uh, acoustic waves are hardly excited in this input signal region because uh, the frequency is much smaller than uh, resonance frequency. Uh, on the other hand, output frequency, uh, output frequency is cr uh, close to resonance. So uh, in this case, charge generated by the electric, uh, uh, electric non-linearity induces the acoustic resonance. So in condition shape, uh, in this condition, effect of UM03, uh, which represents the nonlinear elasticity, is dominant. Uh, in this uh, condition, all input and output frequencies are close to resonance frequency. So, uh, acoustic waves are excited and de detected uh, efficiently for both the linear and nonlinear signals. So, uh, the acoustic effect in the nonlinear uh, stress is significant in this condition. Uh, at last, uh, in condition D, uh, in this condition, effect of mu e, uh, m 12 which represents the nonlinear electromechanical coupling, is dominant. Uh, in this case, only input frequency F2 is much larger than uh, resonance frequency. So, uh, acoustic waves are hardly excited only in this uh, input signal to region, and uh, in the uh, input signal one and output signal region, acoustic waves are excited and detected efficiently. So in this case, uh, 
non-linearity uh, non in electromechanical coupling is dominant. Uh, so all these obtained results can be summarized like this. Uh, influence of uh, nonlinear stress is significant only when the, the output frequency is close to resonance frequency. On the other hand, uh, influence of uh, nonlinear uh, electric flux density is dominant in the other cases. Uh, when either input uh, signals F1 or F2 is close to resonance, uh, influence of nonlinear electromechanical coupling, UM12, is significant. Uh, influence of uh, nonlinear elasticity, UM03, is dominant only when all input and output frequencies are close to resonance. And uh, for any cases, uh, influence of uh, part of uh, nonlinear electromechanical coupling are negligibly small. So from this result, uh, it has been revealed that uh, generation mechanisms of third order nonlinearity are not unique. And significance of each mechanism changes considerably depending on driving conditions. Uh, 